Today we are going to be taking a look at something a little bit different. Demonizer is a new shmup that really caught my eye for a number of reasons. Oh man, that is so awesome. First of all, we have an RPG sprite art aesthetic, which reminds me of shmups like Dragon Spirit or Philios, where we aren't operating some sort of aircraft or spacecraft for a change. To pull directly from the very brief game description, Demonizer is the fantasy bullet battle to end Monster Girl genocide. Turn hateful humans into lovable demons in this 90s arcade style shooter. I think that's a very nice and neat way of putting it before we get into my detailed analysis. So one thing I really like about this game is that it respects a lot of traditional technical boundaries, while also tackling the genre from a fresh perspective. For instance, with this 90s arcade style shooter sprite art, we see some nice big sprites that look like they're properly filling out something close to a 320 by 240 resolution screen. I didn't count pixels, but it looks very close to something that you would expect to see in an arcade at the time or from a 16-bit console. And while that might not be obvious to most people playing the game, you generally will notice something nostalgic or comfortable about the way it feels. And that extends beyond the way it looks. So the music and sound effects also sound a lot like something the FM chips we used in the 90s might produce. I think music and sound effects are something a lot of developers have a hard time emulating when it comes to retro inspired games. I think it's because now we're using mp3 files or aug files or whatever and it's just really easy to put something in that sounds nice, whether it's respecting the technical limitations of the time or not. And I'm not trying to be a retro snob or anything like that. I love all sorts of games that use modern sound effects and music. But I am saying that it's an extra step that adds to that authentic 90s arcade feel. So it's something I really appreciate. And again, it's one of those things that even if you don't recognize it, it might at least feel familiar to you. Now when it comes to the mechanics of this shmup, this is where we see a lot of inspiration drawn from different sources, but also where most of the fresh perspective comes from that I was talking about. When it comes to shmups, I'm not an expert, so to get an expert analysis there, you'd have to talk to someone else. I just love to play them. But what I can tell you is that this feels like it's doing a lot of unique things, specifically in the enemy's behavior. I've noticed that they'll sometimes rush you, which I wasn't expecting, but the main thing is that the enemies will use cover, so they might duck behind a tree where you can't hit them and then pop out again. Sometimes you get ground troops that just straight up chase you across the screen. So they're doing some really tricky things that you'll need to be careful. As you play, you'll pick up blue and red hearts. Now the red ones will give you helpers, or options if we're using Gradius terms. And fortunately, even though your character and all of the helpers are nice big sprites, you'll only have to worry about a very small center hitbox, which makes weaving in and out of bullets a lot of fun. Now you have two different attack types, a regular attack and a focus attack, as well as a bomb. The focus attack has a bit of an enemy homing effect to it, it'll slow down your character movement, and it'll highlight your hitbox with a heart. So it's especially useful to switch to this attack when you need to carefully dodge an array of bullets. There are seven stages to play through, multiple difficulties, and game modes. At the end of each stage is a boss battle. Now the bosses aren't huge like in some games, it's more of a one-on-one -on -one battle. They might send out some of their minions after you, but it's not gonna be like one of those big, super epic bosses. I mean, unless they're saving that for the end, I guess I don't know yet. I didn't get that far. Now for some added replayability, each stage has several goals to shoot for if you want to unlock all of the medals. For example, save all of the Monster Girl helpers in this stage, don't miss any items, no deaths, etc. There's an inebriator game mode which plays similarly, 
but it's like a bonus mode where you're shooting wine to get people to pass out, and instead of a regular bomb attack, it's a barf bomb. Then there's at least one extra playable character and game mode I haven't unlocked yet. So right now this is available for PC, Android, and Raspberry Pi. Now don't take that Android port to mean that it plays anything like a phone app game with microtransactions and crap like that. Yes, you can run it on your phone, but I expect that port is there mainly for people that want to run the game on cheaper or fun project hardware. Same with the Raspberry Pi. Some of you might already have emulator boxes running on Raspberry Pi or Android hardware, which would make this game a very nice addition. I saw a screenshot of the developer playing this on a CRT tipped sideways for Tate mode, and I was immediately drawn to this. I instantly wanted to go out and buy a Raspberry Pi and a CRT for a similar setup, but instead I nicely asked the developer for some footage and he was nice enough to send this along. Someday I would love to get a good quality small CRT that I can do this with, but the fact that this game is set up to do this is really freaking cool. Now I've got a suggestion of my own of course. So there are some moments of dialogue in the game that you can actually turn off in the options, which is really nice, but I would like to see some unlockable CGs to go with that dialogue or those cutscenes. That would probably require finding an artist to do those scenes and that costs money, but it would add another level of polish on this lovely gem of a game. If you're interested in picking this game up, it is on Steam for $13, but even better, you can go to the developer's website, and if you purchase it there, you get all of the additional files for running the game on other hardware like this, plus the Steam code, for the same price. There's also demos available for download on their site if you'd like to try that out first. Anyway, I think we need more games like this to come to consoles. It seems like a lot of the shmups we get on consoles are either very far removed from classic arcade games, or they're just big commercial games like Raiden. So on this channel, I try to focus mainly on console games, but in this case, I really wanted to highlight this game because it really struck a chord with me and I wanted to bring attention to it so that maybe someday we will see more games like this get a physical console release from East Asia Soft or some other publisher. Because lately I keep finding a lot of really good gems in the form of shoot 'em ups on PC and I keep wishing that they were on Xbox, PlayStation, or Switch. But I have made an exception in this case and it's now my most played game on Steam in the past several years. Alright guys, that is going to do it for today, but stay tuned because I've got a crazy delicious surprise coming up next. You'll, you'll just have to see it.